Today we're talking lens adapters. Specifically, we are comparing up the Sigma MC11 to this, the Zelios autofocus adapter. Well, obviously, you know, that's just the box. That's the actual adapter. Now, I picked this up on Amazon for £35. Now, I didn't actually buy this for the purposes of testing. I actually bought this for a different project relating to the Irix 11mm lens that I've purchased. And I will be doing a video on said particular project in the near future. Now, you look at some adapters on the market. You've got the Sigma MC11 that's 200 quid. You've got the Metabones that are... 450 pounds and then you've got adapters like this that are a tenth of the price and you think surely this cannot be 10 times worse than the metabones what are you gaining for that extra money at the end of the day it's just a spacer essentially isn't it not quite you see for adapters like this it's designed to adapt canon mount lenses to sony e-mount bodies and where this presents a problem is in the autofocus algorithms See, whether it's a, a Canon-made lens or whether it's a third-party lens like a Sigma or a Tamron or any of them, if they have autofocus capabilities, then there is software inside the lens that is designed to talk to the camera. So the camera knows where the lens is currently positioned in terms of focus, and it can work out how far in what direction it needs to change it to get the picture in focus. But every manufacturer has different software algorithms, different ways of programming cameras and lenses. So the software in Canon lenses is very different to the software in the Sony cameras. So when you try and then mount one manufacturer's lens onto a different system's body, you not only need the adapter to work as a spacer to get the flange distance correct, you also need it to act as a translator to be able to translate the information between the lens and the camera so the two can understand what is actually going on. So the general rule of thumb is that the higher end, more expensive adapters do a better job of being able to translate this information. But I figured since I have a cheap adapter and I have an expensive adapter, I would put them to the test against each other just to see how they performed. Now, obviously, six months ago, I pretty much sold all my Canon lenses in favor of Sony lenses. So I was kind of very restricted as to what lenses I could use to do this experiment with. So I have the Sigma 35mm f1.4 art lens. I also have the Yongnuo 50mm f1.8 Mark II that I reviewed a few months ago. And I was able to borrow a copy of the Canon 70-200mm f2.8 IS Mark I. However, before I could even get this mounted onto the camera, I ran into a problem. Because it wouldn't mount on the camera but it would just about squeeze onto my NEX5 body, although very, very tight. So I figured it was something to do with the bayonet mount on the back not being quite the right size, maybe just being a little bit too big for what it needed to be. So I spent about half an hour taking a file to various different bits of the teeth, and eventually I got it to be able to mount onto the camera okay. So I did a quick experiment using all three lenses on both adapters, so six combinations. Now, a lot of people, when they do these experiments, they put the camera into video mode and they will track the video focus. I didn't want to do that for this because I found that the video focus doesn't respond as fast as the autofocus when you are using stills. In, in video, there's a slight delay when it tries to shift the focus around. So rather than just shoot video using the a7 III, what I instead did was set up my NEX5 behind the a7 III shooting the screen. So I will apologize in advance for the not brilliant video footage. However, I didn't want to just shoot direct video because I thought it would impede the results of the experiment. For the 35 and the 50 millimeter, I was more just testing the acquiring focus. So using my phone as a remote shutter, I positioned myself in one part of the garden and I could, would test if the lens could acquire focus on me. I would then move to another part and I would refocus. And overall, both adapters worked very well with the Sigma 35. Interestingly enough as well, the Zelios seemed to handle eye autofocus as well, which uh, I didn't think would happen. Using the Yongnuo, however, brought up a surprising result. 
I knew from experience that the Yong Nuo lens will not autofocus with the MC11. It just will not have it. If you manually focus the Yong Nuo lens, the camera will still give you AF confirmation. So it's still able to communicate with the camera. However, it just will not try and autofocus the lens at all. With the Yong Nuo on the Zelios, it will attempt autofocus, but not very well. So what I found is it's able to fine tune the autofocus to get it correct. So if the lens is in the right ballpark of being in focus, then the camera is able to adjust it slightly and get focus correct. However, if the lens is nowhere near in focus, the camera has absolutely no idea where to go or what to try. When I tried the Canon 70 to 200 with these adapters, I wanted to do it as a moving subject. So using my phone, I kept the thumb down on the autofocus so it would constantly try and acquire focus, but I had the camera set to AF priority. So it wasn't going to try and take a picture until it had actually acquired focus. And using the MC11 adapter, it did a fairly good job of tracking me as I moved back and forth and around the frame. It obviously didn't track as quickly and as smoothly as the native Sony lenses, but that was kind of to be expected. And also to kind of be expected, the Zelios had absolutely no chance in hell. It was hunting focus all over the place. It just couldn't actually get a lock on me. Even when I stopped moving and just left myself in the center of the frame, it still seemed to struggle to work out exactly what to do. The next thing I tested that brought out some interesting results was the image quality. Because again, there's speculation that cheaper adapters hinder the image quality over more expensive ones, and I wanted to give that a go. So I did a couple of test shots using the Sigma 35 millimeter shot at both f1.4 and at f8. And when I brought them into Lightroom, I did see a huge difference. And at first, I honestly thought I'd just mess something up because the Sigma MC11, even at f1.4, held onto the image quality very, very well. With the Zelios, however, the center of the frame seemed okay. But as you got away into the corners and the edges of the frame, it just looked completely out of focus, leading me to even do another test shot going out of my back window manually focusing on the house across the street. But even then, you see the same results. Right in the center of the frame, the image stays sharp. As you get off to the corners, however, the image just falls to pieces. This, I suspect, is down to the shiny plastic that they use on the inside of the adapter, causing crazy light reflections. Now, I did find that when I stopped the lens down, that image sharpness brought itself back. Now, I only tested these at f1.4 and at f8. And at f8, both adapters bring out pretty much the same image quality, whereas at f1.4, there is a world of difference. So really, I think if you are somebody who is looking at buying an adapter, which adapter you go for, which adapter works best for you, is going to depend on what you're photographing. Because honestly, between these two lenses, I think if you are somebody who is stopping the lens down and you're not shooting fast-moving subjects, you're not really going to see a huge amount of difference between either one. If you're somebody who regularly shoots at fast apertures of say f2.8 or quicker, you're probably going to see big differences in image quality from more expensive adapters to cheaper adapters. You know, and in terms of focus, you know, using a camera system like the a7 III that's got a hybrid phase and contrast detection, this had no issues in getting focus correct. Where it suffered, was trying to track fast moving subjects because it just couldn't communicate quickly enough with the camera and lens to be able to track a fast moving subject. So if you're somebody who's not photographing moving subject, odds are you're not going to see a huge difference between an adapter like the Sigma and an adapter like this. Now, thankfully those pitfalls of this lens aren't actually a problem for me. As I said, I'm using this for a, um, a bit of a project that I have going on with the Irix 11 millimeter lens. And thankfully this is a manual focus lens, so the autofocus doesn't bother me. And I'll be shooting this primarily stop down anyway, so the image quality is not a problem. I specifically bought this lens because it's got the electronic contacts that I need to be able to control the aperture on this lens. So if you're curious as to what my little secret project is with this adapter and lens, make sure you hit that subscribe button and keep an eye out for that video when it comes out. But that's it for this video. What are your thoughts and comments on different adapters? What adapter do you use and how do you find it works with your lenses? 
Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.